on. Well, you don't have to share it. I'm going to share it. I have to now you know, to protect myself. <laughs> so literally, you gave well, me no choice. Well, you do whatever you want. I, 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 you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. Look, I believe there's life in the universe. And I also believe we've been visited by non-human intelligence. Do I have any proof? No. But I think there's enough evidence to keep looking. And today's video is about narrowing down that evidence. Because that would make this a lot easier. My guest today is Jon Stewart. He's a former pro wrestler, turned aspiring politician, turned UFO investigator. So why am I having him on? I'm going to put a link to two videos in the description if you want to check it out. It's more information about why exactly I'm having John on the podcast. But just a quick recap. There you go. He's recently made some comments in Vetted's videos that I want further clarification on. He's also making a documentary about an alien interview video from the 90s that many people think is kind of BS. It's this one. And I also want to ask him some questions about some statements he made on a recent episode of YouTube's Redacted. Take me back here. This Lockheed Martin insider tells you that in 2004, uh, one of their craft that they had built using alien technology had crashed and a firefight ensued between Lockheed Martin employees and JSOC who descended on this site at the same time. So can you go through this in more detail? Ab absolutely. Now, John sent me some screenshots of this Lockheed Martin insider's emails that detail this Lockheed UAP program and fiasco with JSOC. So, tomorrow, in a separate video, I am gonna share those screenshots. Now, John did ask me not to share them, but I'm gonna share them anyway. And if you watch the interview, you'll understand why. So, please join me tomorrow as I go over those screenshots of exactly what was said and there's one particular screenshot that you're gonna wanna see because it sort of blows the lid off of this whole thing with Lockheed. And it is brought up in this interview, so pay attention, we do bring it up. Now, if you're new to the channel and you like content like this, again, normally we put out just regular UFO videos where I report on things, but today is a special one. So you decided to come on a special day, you should subscribe. Um, again, we put out a new video every day, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, and today that video is this. And of course, hit that like button, y'all. That really helps out the video, so thank y'all so much for doing that. Really appreciate the support. And of course, comment down below of what you think of this. Y'all have been waiting for this interview. I've been talking about it. I'm curious what y'all are going to say, and I'm also curious if y'all think I should do more interviews and more interviews like this. Let me know in the comments. Because if you like it, I'll try to do more. If not, I'll never do another one. Thank you to John. Utmost respect for him coming on the show and staying and an answering all the questions that I wanted to ask. So at the end of the day, whether or not I liked his answers, I do respect him for coming on and facing my questions. So thank you to John. Y'all enjoy the show, vetters. Let me know what y'all think. Hey, John, how you doing, man? Patrick, how you doing, sir? Great, brother. Everything okay today? Everything's great, yeah. Hanging out with the mother-in-law. That's... <laughs> oh. I'd rather be attacked by aliens. <laughs> I hear you on that. No worries, ma'am. Well, good. Uh, thank you for taking the time today, John. I really do um, It is absolutely it. my pleasure. No problem. So, look, man, I'd really just like to, you know, jump in. Um, like I said in my email, I didn't want to, like, do a pregame or talk yeah, or on the sure. phone or any of that stuff. Sure. Um, just want to keep everything public and uh, transparent here. Uh, yeah, ask, so ask me anything. And, you know, I, I, I watch some of your podcasts. You you know, you got a lot of questions about the whole phenomenon and how it's with Crush. And I, ask away. I think, at least for my part, as, as much as I can try uh, to kind of piece everything apart and make it have stuff make a little bit of sense. I'll do my best. Sure, man. So ask yeah, anything. Very, yeah. I have very specific questions, actually. Um, let's start okay. with number one. So like- So are we, we recording now? Oh yeah, yeah, I've been okay, recording cool. uh, All right, the whole great. time. Okay. Um, so look, uh, we we um, confirmed that you're running, right? The channel Hunting Victor, 
you know, the documentary, right. That you've, you've That's been me. commenting on invented yes, right on, on those. Yes, videos, sir. Right? So yes, sir. One yep. statement you made that I found interesting um, in my comments, it was eight days ago on my video about David Grush drops bombs and do interview right in mm -hmm. that video. And you went down in the comments and you basically stated someone asked you, how's the doc coming along, referring to this hunting uh, Victor uh, right. documentary that you're doing. Right. Uh, and you basically said it's going great now that Danny Sheehan is backing up the interview. Now, for mm -hmm. just to give people context, um, the clip that I believe you're referring to. That's why I want to confirm this with you. I made okay. another video showing Danny Sheehan in an interview on a podcast called Night Shift. Um, and he is stated there in that interview that um, there is a, an alien interview video. He knows the guy uh, who was there who filmed it. And if this video came out, it would be shocking. You know, people would say there's no denying this. There's going to be a video of an actual interview of an actual extraterrestrial being. You know so, this? Yes. You know, so I mean, I know that that exists. Uh, and uh, and that's part of the crown jewels that they're not going to want to reveal. And sure. you're basically, your comment is saying you're confirming that Danny Sheehan is referring to your video. Well, not your video, but the video you're making a documentary about. That right? is wrong. That's wrong. Oh, okay. Yeah, please clarify. What, what did you mean? Um, number one, uh, sh shocked and fell off my chair when Daniel, Daniel Sheehan, who I think is very revered and expected in the UFO community, started talking about that there's an alien interview that's out there that's going to that's going to surface. I fell off my chair. Well, what are you, trying to be honorable or you know follow up on things. I'm an alpha male. I'm the hunter. I called Danny Sheehan. Had a phone call with him about uh, five or six days ago. We ran over. We talked for an hour and a half. Ran over everything. Um, I don't think my alien video is the one Daniel Sheen is talking about. Uh, we went over names. The man, the deathbed confession is not my victor. And it is not my, as everyone knows, uh, as everyone knows, not everyone, but people who have followed the, my document that got leaked, some of it, a man, the DIA told, uh, said in their investigation, a man named Joseph Yeager helped facilitate the sale of the film and whatnot. And Daniel Sheehan, not, this was not Joseph Yeager either. So I had an hour and a half phone call with Daniel Sheehan. He confirmed that he was told that there, you know, was a film of an alien interview. He did not confirm to me that it was my alien interview. He was just awesome on the phone call, listened to everything. We compared notes and uh, asked me to call him back, said he will recall me back. So yeah, everything, in my opinion, is is uh, so happy that Daniel Sheehan appears to be willing to help me and or at least, you know, be a sounding board. But I can confirm that my video is I do not know and I don't think so is the exact interview interview that Daniel is is, is talking about, which is even more bizarre. So there's more than one alien interview out there that's floating around. Um, it's it, it looks like there is. OK, well, let me just jump in here real quick. So so that comment, it's going great now. That's this is just to quote you. It's going great now that Danny Sheehan is backing up the interview. So what interview you're just saying, what okay. interview are you well, referring well, to in that comment? OK, right. I am confirming confirming. And here's one thing that there's a problem with me with the Internet people. I speak in genuine, genuine, gen, generalities. I speak in broad strokes. I am sorry that there are keyboard warriors that want me to be ultra specific. And I, I, I'm a human being. I'm a businessman. I have attention deficit disorder. I have to speak in broad strokes. I am sorry that that sometimes that's a problem. I will try and get better at that. Um, <laughs> meaning that. Here is everyone laughing at me saying that, you know, that my video is total fake, that it doesn't, I don't care if it's fake or not. I want to find the truth. Well, well hang on, but hang on. Fact, I, I wait just, a minute. Can I, I just, can I finish that? Dan, Daniel sure. Sheehan, my point is, sorry, I'm, I'm blabbering and I'm going to. Yeah. I just want to get better. to the question. Dan, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm answering it. The fact that Daniel Sheehan is also commenting that there is an alien interview program run by the government to me, 
is going great for my documentary because now I can tell TV executives, oh, you know, this really respected lawyer, this constitutional lawyer that everyone respects. He also knows that there was an alien interview program. He knows there's a video out there and he had a deathbed confession. So that's what I meant. Makes my so, job easier. Sure. So but you're saying they're not the same video. So you're saying I don't believe they are. So yes. how does Danny Sheehan not know about your video that that being real, I, but he knows about the other one? How did I have we didn't, we barely even talked about my Victor alien interview when we were on the phone. I never said that Danny Sheen is talking about my Victor alien interview. You said you talked to him about I, it. You compared notes. I did. But he, this is not the interview that he was obviously talking about because his deathbed confession that, you, guy was not in my room. So this could be the that. same being. I don't know. I understand that. But you you did bring it up with him. You, you clearly talked to him about it. Did. That's I don't what I'm saying. What so, the problem is. Well, you've said two different things. You've said originally, you know, it's not the same video. So you compare notes, you know, it's not the right. same. Then two minutes later, you said, you don't know if it is the same video. I, I'm sorry. Not. When Daniel Sheehan first came out on that show, it was like 10 days ago, he said, there's an alien interview floating out. Well, what do you think? I, what would you think? <laughs> it's my interview. After I talked to him, we realized it probably wasn't my interview. Okay, Does that there make sense? You go. Okay. Yeah, now that makes Sorry. sense. So originally you well, thought it was, and that's yes, what sir. you're referring to in this yes, comment. Sir. Yes, sir. And then when you spoke to him, you were able yes, to sir. say it's not Probably the not the okay. same one. Yeah. Well, there we go. Yeah. That's Sorry. Just, uh, that's okay. No problem. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate you clearing that up. Oh, no so, problem. At the beginning of that comment right that's a reply in there that statement you made as part of a bigger comment that you made um yes on that video so you commented on the again the david grush drops bombs a new interview is the 2b mm -hmm. special that jeremy corbell and and mm -hmm. david grush did right they did mm -hmm. that interview and you right. wrote just to be clear i brought my et investigation to burchett referring to i presume representative tim burchett right the sure. united states congress Four months before Grush, Burchette's assistant told me, holy shit, this government agent just backed up your investigation. Quote, trust Grush. He is bound by NDA agreements. The guy is for real. Can you just expand upon? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let me let me very quickly go over the chronology, which I think should impress people and upset your viewers of the glacial speed of Congress and the absolute ignorance of Congress, especially me. Remember, I'm like your viewers. I am a nobody. I'm a regular average citizen that came forward. In August of 2022, I flew to New York and I had a meeting with Leslie Keene and Ralph Blumenthal of the New York Times. August of 2022. They told me, stop, within an hour and a half of interviewing me, we believe you, stop. We can't do anything unless you could get us somebody from the military active or the intelligence community that can verify what you are saying. This interview is real and the government's inter inter ex extraterrestrial interrogation and retention uh, program is real. You're saying that, you're saying uh, Ralph Blumenthal and Leslie Kane told you that. Well, correct. That if you could state, find us, it is real. No, the video Ralph, is real. We believe you. That's what you said. We believe you. The video is real. Yes. I just Ralph want to make Blumenthal, sure we get that quote right. Ralph Blumenthal, after an hour and a half of talking with me, went like this. Stop. Stop. It's real. We believe. No, we believe your investigation. You did a great job. We believe that the people in this room, uh, these names are real. We believe that someone from the intelligence community sent you this. No, so they, they didn't say that that they, alien is real. No, they did. OK, not. got it. So they're just no, saying, they did not. hey, you did an investigation. That's a fact. Correct. And, it, okay. and, and to us, this would be this looks like this is bearing out that the interrogation retention facility, uh, interrogation and retention program is real. They never commented on the video. I never even showed in the video, just photo stills. But what I did, how I vetted the people in that room that was sent to me, Ralph and Leslie said this. You're on to something. We can't do anything unless a verified military intelligence person actively involved in the government will come forward and say, John Stewart's investigation is correct. Okay. That's August of 2022. And thank you for letting me go over the chronology. Yeah. So they thought Martin, they had me a merit to further oh, investigate, God, yes, right? Yes, That's what you're yes, saying. Yes. Okay. Interesting. And, but they never yeah. saw the video itself. 
Well, no, I sent it to Leslie and Ralph later. Yes, of course. When I got back to Chicago, you know, I sent so them they further saw, notes. They, and, what, yes. how did, what did they respond after they saw the video? Leslie and Ralph never, they actually never commented to me about it. I, I, I Don't you find that interesting that they didn't, after they saw the video, they didn't respond? I, I, I really don't, I can't, I, I don't know. I, you know, they never said fake or hoax or it looks real or Leslie. But did they never say said it, it is real. They didn't say anything. Never. Let Ralph and Leslie never said it was real. That's what I'm Ever. saying. And I never I'm just, said I'm that. I'm just they... asking your opinion. Like, you know, yes. I'm sure you would have yeah. thought about it as a regular well, average Joe. Like it you said, does why wouldn't fake. they respond to me? Right. Well, when they saw the still pictures, Ralph Blumenthal was like, <laughs> you know, he was, the, you know, we were in a uh, uh, the pub area of the Midtown Hilton. And I was giving them the photo stills with the two, the two doctors, the bean, the, the, uh, the DNI 27 on the bottom. And Ralph was, you know, his eyes were like uh, as big as, uh, as uh, apples. And, you know, he's passing to the Leslie. Leslie's looking at him. And, you know, Leslie has seen all kinds of bizarre sure. stuff from her investigations. But, you know, what kind of comment can you make? It, the film on the outset does look like it could be fake. Darkened room. You just see the head. I have sure. never. It looks fake. It Like it could be a fake video also. So it yeah, looks so fake. They, uh, very, I'm just being honest. It definitely looks fake, man. Um, but I'm curious, like they haven't responded to you at all since then. Basically. I've talked to you, Leslie. You... I talked to Leslie once, twice a month for the past year and a half. Oh, since she saw the video. Yeah, I'm trying to follow up what I'm what happened. Has there, there been any conversation about the video with her? No, and no. Those. So it, what are conversation... those conversations about? Um, I mean, if I'm like, allowed to ask. Well, can I can I can I just go back to the chronology? So February. Sure. Martin Luther King's day, my wife and I get in a car, drive six hours round trip to drop off my investigation packet. The same thing I showed Leslie to representative Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, who created the 2022 NDAA amendment. The fact that I'm remembering this is with my COVID brain is, but so I dropped it off at his office, like a gentleman. Followed up with a phone call the next day, followed up with a call the next day and in the, the next week and a month later, nothing, not even a letter. Hey, Mr. Stewart, we got your packet. We know yeah. this coincides with it, which I I think that should piss off your viewers, to be honest with you. A, 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 a guy who ran for governor, drove six hours round trip, hand delivers something because it's important. He's trying to be a gentleman and show you respect. You don't send him a letter or a phone call to say, well, Thank you for stopping he did by say the you're office. just. You did kind of just say you're just an average dude. You didn't say I you're an average for dude. I'm, well, not I'm just governor. saying, I don't know if you can be both, right? If you if well, you can have the esteem and want the respect of the esteem, right. but also say I'm just a regular guy. Well, maybe they well, don't have time for regular guys bringing them videos that, that look is, fake <laughs> at the beginning, <laughs> right? Right. Apparently, that's probably the case. I don't know, but I hear okay, you. So, point too. right. Well, when you're driving six hours, you know, I, I mean, I, you would yeah, think somebody I've, would. If Look, somebody drove six hours to drop something and you, yeah, off to me, yeah, I'd be pissed. Yeah. I agree. I, I mean, just okay. on a personal well, I note, I feel that. you. I feel yeah. you, of course. So now this goes by, and um, I meet other, I, I get other whistleblowers, or you know, people just coming to me with different stories and whatnot because I started doing podcasts about this, trying to metastasize this investigation, asking for people's help, and so <clears throat> then. Tim Burchett comes on the scene, which blew my mind. I'm like, oh my God, this, this guy's a this guy's a player in the in the UFO community. Wow. I can't believe what this guy was saying. And I said, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bypass Gallagher. I'm not getting any any leeway. And I flew to Washington, DC in spring of 2023. Again, like Gallagher, hand delivered my investigation over to Tim Burchett's office. He was not there. He was back in, in Tennessee. spring of 2023. Yes, it was like uh, mayor, mayor. It was like May of 2023. Took pictures with okay. some of his staff. They actually, yeah. when I came there, said, "Mr. Stewart, yes, we were getting your emails. We were expecting you. Thank you for coming." I never heard anything from Timber Chat. I emailed. I uh, then I started communicating with his chief of staff or his one of his aides, whose name is first name is Noah, and back and forth. And I'm like, this this guy's gonna not. This guy's not gonna help me either. And then Tim, then David Grush comes forward in July. I'm like, holy shit. This is like, all oh, this is, you know, because I remember what, what Leslie and Rolf said. The first time you get somebody that verifies an alien retention program or that we have aliens and craft, you're, 
they both said your story is going to be in the New York Times. This is this is it. This is what you. So Tim, so uh, David Grush comes forward. Wait, uh, they told you what? your story is going to be in the New York Times. Yeah, Leslie and Ralph told me we can print this story in the New York Times if you find us someone from the government to verify your story. So when David Grush comes forward and he's I'm a colonel with this and I'm in with intelligence, I, I uh, Patrick, I swear to, I, I, I fell off my chair. I'm like, I looked at my wife. My wife's like, my God, your story's going to run. They're, you know, finally, somebody is validating, you know, this program. And. Um, yeah. it just didn't seem like it was enough. I, 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 this is my opinion. And, um, and I've asked Leslie and I'll tell her your, I'll tell you her response. It just didn't seem like Grush was enough cachet for somebody to say, well, he's talking exactly about what John Stewart's, you know, investigated for five years and Rolf and Leslie, you know, I wrote them. I'm like, well, this is it. Are we, are we a green light? Are we going with the story? And I'll talk to Ralph and it just kind of, fizzled out they're putting this you know going forward with this like rush wasn't enough and i finally it was about two months ago uh leslie and i were talking about something i said you know i still don't understand what the delay is about my 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 whole investigation when exactly what you told me should happen would be a green light for my story did happen and there's no green light and i am paraphrasing leslie said we just don't feel we have enough of uh, like documentation, despite Grush, to back up Project Aquarius. And I sure. I talked to Leslie five days ago, you know, about this Lockheed story and stuff like that. We are in very good terms. We communicate. I don't email Ralph that much, um, but uh, Leslie and I communicate, you know, at least once a month, once every six weeks. Hi, how are you? I've got this. I've got that. You know, um, people tell me not to do that, not to share things, but... Um, I try and be as open about this investigation as I can. Unlike most UFO researchers who keep, keep everything cloistered and wait till they can sell it or get a like and a click or get your credit card number or whatever. I have been very open with people I trust about every step of the way of my, of my investigation. So that's where it sits right now. So I just got a, I just got an email from Timber Chet's um, assistant Noah again, uh, four days ago. Cause I was kind of yelling at him like, well, now my emails have been swiped the red, but not deleted emails. Now my contacts on my phone are gone, only leaving the phone numbers. What more do I have to tell you that you have an American citizen that obviously something weird is going on electronically with his phone and you're still not helping me. And he's like, you know, we're sorry, uh, contact your senators. So just to confirm real quick, you're That's saying the story. That, <clears throat> sure. So you're saying that Tim Burchett, in his office think there's something uh, there's some sort of validity to your investigation right when did i say that well your comment right here it says i brought my et investigation to burchette four months before grush burchette's assistant told me holy shit this government right. agent just backed but up they don't your think my video my right okay i understand that but they don't think my video or, or the investigation is like lock solid. Just the fact that somebody is coming from the government saying we have ETs and ETs and craft. Does that make but sense? You're yeah, but you're saying the assistant said that the yes. agent, are you referring to Grush as being the government agent? Correct, sir. Yes. So that's what I'm saying. You're saying Grush is backing up your investigation? Right. But not enough for them. Just like Leslie and Ralph. I don't know what. Do people not believe that Grush? worries me? I'm not going to lie. I'm just saying that worries me. I'm being honest with you, man. Uh, just as someone from the outside, I'm not involved in this. I'm just a, re I am a, just a regular dude. I have never run for political office or nothing. You know, I'm just Don't. a hardworking, owned a food truck, you know, just a regular guy. And that, that worries me a little bit. If that somebody, that somebody wrote to, to me, with you. That, that somebody wrote to me, no, that hey, they think that that forward. alien video could be, could be something that worries. I never me, said that they think that it could be something. Ralph and Leslie think that there must be something to it. But, but I never said Bert, they Bert's are. assistant told me, holy shit, this government yes. agent just backed up your investigation. What investigation? The investigate. OK, about? again, I'm generalizing the investigation that the government is holding craft in ETs. Okay? Oh, well, every. Sorry. I mean, OK, well, there's a lot of people to... saying that okay. I don't I didn't know okay. you had investigated that. Yes. Uh, I, you, when you, I investigated you. the alien interview film, the Victor film, the aperture on my investigation opened into also investigating Project Aquarius, which okay. I have been 
I have read, I have been told is a, the umbrella project from 1962 ish with all things reverse engineering, biologics, and, and, and off-planet material, Project Aquarius. So I went from just trying to prove the alien video was real or not to opening up the investigation into Project Aquarius. You pulled the thread. Sorry about that. No, it's oh, okay. I'm just, I just want to clarify. Time. You pulled the thread yeah, I appreciate and, that. and it yes, undid a lot is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Correct. This is all we yeah. want is clarification yeah. for some of this right. stuff. Um, I, you know, I want your words to speak for themselves and people I appreciate can make that. discern, yes. right? They can make their own opinion on what right. they think of it. Right. Uh, I'm not here to push that. Now let's move on to the next thing here, man. Um, this is a little interesting. Um, so about this Lockheed Martin situation. Mm -hmm. So let me start with this. So you sent me an email with screenshots of this exchange. Now, okay. here's my issue, John. Okay. And I think I've been fair and pretty respectful and polite this entire time, but I got to admit, man, that email you sent me was, it disturbed me. Let me tell you why, because you said, here's you sent all the screenshots and you just said please do not share this you didn't ask me if i wanted to enter into an agreement of ha having something private you normally ask somebody hey can i share something you private? get an nda and yes, they and they and they have consent i didn't consent you put that burden on me and if this story is true and that's classified you just put my family in danger you just put my friends in danger you put my brand my business in danger I'll be honest, man, I don't appreciate that. I don't think that was cool to send me that email like that. And it worries me that you've sent that email to other people in this. And I don't know if you meant it, but it's manipulative because now you've put the burden on me. Right. You asked me integrity. to send you an email of what was sent to me. But I you, sent it to you like you asked. But you said, please do not share. You should have said, right. hey, man, can I can I share something private with you first? You didn't what do that. What did you that. think I was going to send you? Bro. Listen, you I've asked talked me for to a too many people. Was, I, I'm sorry, you, but okay. that was that wasn't cool, man. I, I'm just being honest with you. If that's real you and that's asked, actually classified material, what did you want me to send you? You know what I mean. You said, please do not share it. The right. Don't put the emails me, out on the on the internet. Can you the just first read one the you sent me? The first one you sent you first you sent me the first screenshot of the initial the top part of the right, email just to show you, you that say, we're, we're locked in. Yes, and you didn't say. Hey, don't share this, right? You didn't say that in the email, but the next one. So I asked for more because that one didn't say that. The next one, you sent the rest and you said, please do not share. So Understood. I tell you what, man, I'm sorry, but I have to share that information because you've put my family well, in danger. You've put me well, in danger. It's the same reason why I came forward. I'm you sorry. Can share it. Oh, I'm you going to, to apologize I, because I, well, why I, are you, const I, that's I constantly on my show say that I don't want anonymous sources. I don't want right. private secret information. Right. I don't want that burden on me. I right. always say that I've, I've, I can clip, you know, a million times together, edited together of me saying that on my show. Right. So I'm just saying, I'm going to have to share that stuff, man. And I'm sorry. Uh, um, I just I don't appreciate, forward. Okay. you know, I'm sorry. You don't appreciate that. I would talk to other I, people and ask them, hey, what do you think about this this situation? They're going to tell you, yeah, man, you should have gotten consent, consent first before you send somebody something that you believe to be so serious. Because you even said yourself that you think that put I, your family in danger, right? That's why you came forward. They swiped your emails. You wanted to protect this whistleblower, right, that works for Lockheed. That's a lot to, right? That, I, and I lot, also man. said- And you put that on said, me. I also said, on um, well, you don't have to share it. I'm going to share it. I have to now you know, to protect myself. <laughs> so literally, you gave well, me no choice. Well, you do whatever you want. I, 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 you know, I'm sorry you feel that way. You asked me for something. You knew you were asking for a, an email chain sent to me from a whistleblower. I send you right. the email chain. But and you now added I'm what? But I, what did you add to it? Please do not share. Right. I didn't ask just, you to do that. Right. I didn't ask okay. you to send me stuff I can't share because the first one you sent me, you didn't oh, say do not share. I understand. OK, it's about right. consent, man. I'm just saying it's about getting. Okay. But that worries me. See, who else have you sent this stuff to? Who else is if this if you're really trying to protect this whistleblower, you sent me that information. You don't even I, know me. You didn't. I even didn't me. I'm not protecting that whistleblower. He never said to protect him. Ha, ha, he said, you, don't you say said on redacted. You're going to protect him. No, I'm going to protect the fact that I just don't want to tell people exactly where you work. So there's 30 people outside his office. 
So that's my own trying to be a gentleman. I mean, okay, you want to okay, start I'm splitting saying, years. But, I mean, God, but who God do bless you, you. But you don't know me. Why would you send me that stuff? You like, you well, really don't know me. How do you know everyone, I'm not going to share it? Does that make sense? Like, that you I, yeah, I me. Under totally understand what it's you're weird. saying. It's weird. That's just weird. Okay. Uh, so how long before okay. you got those emails did you go public with that story? As I'm just curious how long you vetted this story before well, you went first of all, the public about why it. Why would I have to vet anything? I was selfishly going forward. Excuse me. Why do you I have was to vet selfishly, anything? I was self. What do you mean? I get a story from a guy about this Lockheed story. My emails go missing off my so phone. You just, no so one you did give me an answer. It. And I said to myself, wait a minute, something, are those two coincidentally in, involved? I found out exactly the, uh, the, the satellite office that he works at. Um, I, you know, I, I saw the chain of where he was working at and, and what armed services he was in. The things that he was telling me, I called two other uh, military intelligence people. So for the little part of vetting that I needed, I wasn't going to put this into a documentary, a movie, or this was just me like, this might be something real. I'm going to go public to selfishly protect me. I don't care what people think of the investigation. I was coming forward on my friend's show, Redacted, to protect me, no matter how selfish it is. And every step of the way of that that tale I was telling of the email chain, I said, it gets crazier. As crazy as it sounds. I don't know if this is real or not. This is what I was told. That's, I mean, why would you go public what? with something like that? You don't even know if it's real and you're going to accuse Lockheed Martin of because murder, a privately traded company, right? Like I wasn't accusing them. I was relating an email from someone. That's a cop out, man. No offense, but that's. Well, that's I, I, I told you, I selfishly out. went public because I think, the two were tangentially related. This guy think, coming forward and my emails being swiped. I, I, I okay, you can. You I'm can just saying. Give me all your the, contortions. I, I'm sorry. All right. all right. I think people watching this are doing the same thing, man. No offense, but so. So, like, so a guy reaches out to you, tells you this crazy story. I get emails all the time the and wind. messages. I well, I'm glad them you told your people that because people think that I don't get emails. So I'm glad you admitted that people like you and I. We get contacted Definitely. by people. Oh, great. And they're, Thank you. And they're hilariously, your think, obviously fake. And you right. somehow go are public those, did, with did them. Did you think that emails, did you think those emails yes. were fake? Yes, because I'm okay. showing them on the screen now and people have already seen them and they're also thinking they're fake. Man, those emails okay. don't look real at all. I mean, that's just my initial reaction. Right. So again, selfishly, so whether they're real or not. Why would you I, think they I, were real? What, what Top three the, things the, why you thought they were real. That's, I'm curious. Top three things. The coding and the abbreviation in the email is much like many people that I have dealt with with the government. Number two, two military intelligence insiders told me that Lockheed had its own re crash retrieval team. And the one military intelligence insider told me, quote, about the 04 firefight. It got really bad. So there's are your three things. How does that make Dr. that Greer, real, Dr. Though? Stephen Greer, it doesn't. I'm just covering my ass selfishly by just coming out one time unredacted and saying this is what, what, what this is what has happened. It doesn't if that's sound selfish, good, man. I'm selfish. Well, I I'm sorry you feel that way. It's not just me. But you get this bizarre yeah. story, and someone tells you that this that this story that this man is telling you is real, and three or four days later your emails get swiped gone. And Who told you, you and, and, this story is real? I just told you. I you talked didn't. to two military intelligence insiders about this story. One said yes, that Lockheed had a private uh, recovery team. The other military intelligence insider said not only did they have a private recovery team, the 2004 firefight story is real. Can you tell me yeah. about it? No. All I can tell you is it got really bad. So let me ask you this. Then I went to myself, wait a minute. And I told my wife the whole story. And she's like, well, this is, there's got to be some relation to this. You get these emails, you ver ver you're verifying that it's real by an email and calling people, and now your emails are gone. So, but I you said, admit I'm you barely did any vetting because you said, why right, do well, I have to vet this well, initially? So, why do well, I need to vet I? this? I should just I, go uh, public with it. No, if I, I, I if those military people said it's bullshit, if Dr. Greer told me, no, Lockheed doesn't have craft. They don't have a recovery team. Patrick, I never. How well do you know you can trust those two military? Very well. Of yours? Very well. I've been speaking with them for four years and everything. They've and they're anonymous, right? Solid. Yes. Yeah. 
So let me ask you this. So I'm I, so I'm lying. I'm a 25. You, you know, I've been married for 25 years. I've got three kids. I'm I'm retired. You know, I'm a liar. Okay, I'm lying. So Mike, dis have you ever heard of Disclosure Tonight? It's a show. Uh, Mike Disclosure is a person that's on that show, and Rick Doty is also a guest on that show all the time. And they reported not too long ago that Lockheed Martin has a reverse engineering program, much like you stated, right? But they say it's in Suffolk, Virginia, the lighthouse, and that's the only one, and that's where it's done. And according to your emails that people are seeing, that's not true. So, which I'm curious, just for our listeners, like, what do you think? Why is there a discrepancy in that information? And, and what relationship do you have to Richard Doty? Well, you can read, you can read in the emails, um, you can read in the emails that the uh, whistleblower, if that's what we want to call him, said that the craft came from the California facility of Lockheed. So and then the whistleblower, then the, the military reverse program. I don't know that. I don't know that whatsoever. All I know is that he said that this uh, AV, alien ARV, alien reproduction vehicle, came from a facility of, in California. And the whistleblower that said it got bad said it crashed in a small mining town north in North Nevada. I originally thought it was uh, south of Las Vegas, it's actually North Nevada. North Nevada, so, a small mining town. That's where this craft crane came down. I don't know if it crashed or landed sure, or not, sure. but that's well, because that whistleblower and the, the email said that there are no other programs that he knew of, that he was aware of, that that was the only one. He also states at the end okay. that he doesn't even know if any of it's true because he says they're all just stories he heard around the wall water cooler. And it's right. a tidbit he forgot to tell you at the beginning that he didn't know if it was that important. Right. I read what? that part. Uh, you didn't know if it was that important to start. So you think it's with, a big deal that I went to Clayton true? Morris on Redacted just to kind of come clean, yes, just to just, just to come deal. public. I'm I sorry, think you thousands feel that way. of it's not just me, man. I think the, the thousands of people who are going to watch this video and you know that's going to happen, they're going to feel the same way, man. Why are you mudding the waters of the UFO community of what stories are out there that are verifiable, man? We're trying to build right a structure of credibility in this community with stories that we can verify. And then people like yourself who don't vet these stories and who don't even feel they have to vet them. Because again, we, you just admitted, and so did I, we get these emails, we get these messages to come forward with this information, right? Don't you feel that you, do you think it's possible you were fed misinformation, disinformation? Absolutely. It's possible. So then why come forward with it? Why not? Because make my sure emails it's were stolen. Are you not understanding? Oh, I, I get I'm going to find out. I'm going to find that. out a hundred percent. I love this. It's John Stewart. This is what people have told me for five years. I'm the only person that's got to have the alien in formaldehyde. I'm the only guy who has to prove that there's a, a crash saucer in my garage. Everyone else can, can trade. We're on not the talking about the everyone UFO else. Conjecture. We're not talking about everyone else. I'm I bet it. I got the story. I got the story. I asked two trusted military sources who told me the story is true. Dr. Greer telling me that Lockheed had its own crash retrieval story. I called Lockheed, the media department, to get a, to get a quote or a comment on what was emailed to me. And then my emails went missing. I'm who, sorry. Who deleted your emails? Who do you think we don't know. your emails? The, the All of your, when you say know. your emails, what do you mean your emails? What accounts? Okay. All your sure. accounts? I have two AOL accounts, my dad and myself. I have an iCloud and I have a Gmail on my iPhone. This is the second time that the emails went disappearing. Two other times there was other weirdness that is. is that how can they prove that your emails are missing? Like, are they just deleted? Like, how did you prove to the cops they, they got deleted by an outside force that wasn't I, yourself? I didn't prove it. I, 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 you can't prove it. I went, so, to, so, I went well, that, to Apple. I know, but you're using the police as like, oh, they're oh. right. So you just went to them with the story, but they can't verify it. No, right. but they took an incident report. They said, look, they took I, an incident says, report, which is yeah, you can go they, to the police and tell them anything happened and they'll write an incident report. I just want to clarify for our viewers. They're not yes. they're not claiming that you're that that happened to you. Right. You have no the way police to prove officer that, asked that me, happened. Right. So the police officer, asked, police officer asked me what happened the first time this happened. And I said, I went to Apple. Apple did a forensic audit on my phone. OK, and I'm going to tell you exactly what they said. This is really interesting. So Apple does a deep dive forensic audit on my phone while I'm sitting there watching them go into my phone. 
And then they did some other things. And, they, and the Apple guy told me, this was about a year and a half ago, um, this is what bothers us, Mr. Stewart, is that not only was your AOL emails missing, which has been a problem with AOL, what disturbs us is that your iCloud emails went, go, went missing on your phone and your Gmail emails are missing on your phone. And the other AOL account that's not yours is your father's on your phone are gone also. That means somebody was actually into that phone somehow from Apple. That's disturbing. Apple yeah. telling you, and, sure. and, and, and if you ever see them do a forensic audit, Patrick, it's really bizarre. So, like you can sit there I've and they go it. on your phone. Okay, yeah. So I Apple was about disturbed that. That four email platforms. Oh, Am I saying that right? Is that what they're? Is that what they're I, I actually asked you because uh, I was curious what you were going to say and what details you're going to throw. Um, I okay. kind of want to personally. I want to move on from it. Um, I, I look. I don't know. You, you know. You had your emails taken. There's no way to prove it one way or the other, and no. that's fine. Um, I, I'm curious. I want to get back. You didn't answer this one question. What's your relationship to Rick Doty? I'm just curious. Oh, Rick Doty. Um, when I got um, in my birthday of 2022 when I was sent the list, the DI defense intelligence agency inner office memo um, of the, these alleged theft of this film from S2 alpha or S4. And I got all the names and I vetted all the names and, but you know, I had, I had information, but I didn't have knowledge. I, I, you know, I'm not a military guy and decoding all the vernacular. And so my wife, contacted on my behalf, Rick Doty on Facebook. And I just simply asked him about the, the alien interview. Um, and, you know, we've been communicating since uh, July of 2022. He's been an invaluable source because he knows the vernacular. He knows what I need to ask people to kind of, to, to, to kind of figure out if what they're telling me jives at least basically military military jargon and lingo and what and whatnot so uh so rick's been just invaluable at that and rick if i've said this over rick told me i don't know much about the the video except that i know that internally in the intelligence community that film is real interesting is, and he's gone on the Doty... podcast to say that that film is real is your is one of your sources rick Doty that no. you used to vet the lockheed no. martin no so let me tell you a story, man. I actually busted Disclosure tonight, Rick Doty and Mike Disclosure of spreading disinformation like right. not too long ago. So I'm curious, why do you trust Rick Doty when he's one been proven <clears throat> to right put di misinformation into the UFO community and then wants to be a part of the UFO community again? I sort of compared it to you know, someone who's accused, right, of something against someone and then wants to be a part of that group again. It, it seems kind of odd. Um, do you think his, like, right, what, how people view him in the community, do you, do you, I don't know, do you think that hurts your credibility to associate yourself with him? Um, there's 7 billion people on the planet. Two people have a DD-214 putting them at Papoose Lake, the S2 Alpha complex. Do you not want me to talk to those two people when my investigation into this film allegedly took place below this S2 Alpha complex? Would any credible invest? You, you're telling me 20, 15 minutes ago that I am faulty for not doing enough vetting. And then I go and ask the only person that is coming forward, one of two people in the world, who has a DD-214 that puts him at alpha, S2 Alpha, but you're now telling me maybe I shouldn't talk to that one person because... He doesn't have credibility. He's also he's also the person. I know that he's also the person. Him. Well, I'm just telling you, he's also the person that admitted to pumping the UFO community with misinformation. Right. He also paid other people to pump misinformation into okay. the UFO community. Many people who he paid have not come forward. You don't even know the full depth of what he did. He right. also calls the UFO community sort of dumb and ignorant and they don't listen to him and he can't understand why. Well, when somebody writes, I understand he, Rick Doty to me is like the pro wrestler in so, the eighties. Oh. Oh, can I, can I finish? Rick Doty to me is like the pro wrestler in the eighties. You know, they, we lie, we, you know, are theatrical liars. And then something happens that pisses us off with a promoter and we want a little retribution. So we come clean. 
Does a pro wrestler who came clean in 1984 that wrestling is fixed and worked and predetermined just because he lied for 20 years, is he no longer now have the ability to tell the truth? I'm just asking. I hate so, to break do, apart that analogy. That, do, you know, do you know Rick Doty? I'm just saying that Rick I'm going to go back to it tenure, so you can continue, but I'm sure. going to come back to Rick that Doty's analogy because it doesn't the Air make Force. sense. It doesn't make sense. Rick Doty lied tell you for his career like a pro wrestler, and maybe That's he's a little same. jaded. Okay. One, know we know wrestling you. is fake. Everyone is in on that. Right. That's the big difference, man. I'm talking that about guy, somebody who was lying guy for a living. That he gave information to. He also gave misinformation to Linda Moulton Howe. How many different people did he give misinformation to? Okay, I asked to? Linda Moulton Howe about that. Not that I am defending Rick Doty. I use him for vernacular. Does this sound right? What do you think of this, Rick? So on a Rick, scale of we... 1 to 10, how much do you trust him? Well, it's kind of, I, I really can't put that in terms because for, for this simple reason, we have a counterintelligence agent who's retired, who's now telling us that aliens are real. Shouldn't he be content? Shouldn't he? And I can't figure this out, Patrick. It would like, be smart I, of I, you to keep him at arm's length, honestly. That would be a smart yeah, answer for you, you to say. Okay. So isn't it, I doesn't, wouldn't, if he was continuing the counterintelligence detail, wouldn't he tell us, keep telling the world, Aliens are fake or, you know, aliens, are, the no, UFOs are not no, real. I, no, okay. you would do it exactly like he's doing it, but he's okay. not doing it well. I don't know. There's something off about that guy all the time. He's always involved in these crazy stories. It's like, again, he provided that Lockheed story to Mike Disclosure to put on and the story that that I busted them on the President Biden phone call and the transcripts. Like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I'm me. just saying if you're still undecided on them. I'll just be careful. I'm not. Do what I, I you appreciate want. that. It's your life. I appreciate right? that. Of course, Thank you, you do what you want. But, you know, I don't he, know. In this community, who you associate yourself with, you do have to I, be careful. You know, everyone. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's like spy versus spy. Um, everyone one time was yelling at me on a, on a chat room and on a YouTube video. Oh, John Stewart's coming forward. The, the facility on top of S4 is S2 Alpha. The S2 Alpha Annex, this crazy eyed clown face wrestler. He's, you know, he's, he's so full of shit. All of a sudden pops on the chat room is a Sergeant master Sergeant, Michael Munoz. Sorry, folks, John Stewart's absolutely correct. The facility above S4 S4 is called the S2 alpha annex. He starts writing this whole detailed list of, you know, all of the security measures there. He writes me emails, Mr. Stewart, this is how you would order a wall clock. If you were in S4 or S2 Alpha, this is the security designations, Yankee White, Yankee Black. And so totally, totally backing up what Rick Doty is telling everyone about S2 Alpha. And then let me just finish. And then to have Rick Doty at an arm's length produce a FOIA request from 1983 that says in 1962, when the DIA was formed, they created this bizarre facility out at Pampers Lake and he's got the FOIA request. He's got the paper. You know, that's, yeah. that's a pretty important thing to have when you are going out telling people this animatronic looking alien video might be real or that at, at the very least, you're just trying to find if it's real or not. So completely ignoring sure. the only person in the world who has the document to saying that he is. Yes, I would. At Pampers, I would you would have him. to say, you, you would, you would probably him. want to be able to call that guy from time to time. I wouldn't. Okay. You couldn't trust Thank anything you. you say because, right, well, you couldn't trust anything. I've been in the car because... business for 30 years. I don't trust anything anybody tells me. Well, so, well, let's know. be real. If this is as, as important as people purport it to be, and it is, it's answering one of the few questions humanity has never answered, right? Absolutely. You, then you should, right? Then your guard should be up yeah. at its highest, not, does that make sense? So right. I get what you're saying, but if he has been proven to spread misinformation and you have to keep him at arm's length, then yes, you never, to play it safe, because again, this is the most important investigation in human history, you wouldn't in involve that guy anymore. Sorry, you lost your ticket to the table. I'm sorry. You can apologize. Okay, maybe you're reformed, but go, you know, go on a ranch or on a farm and, and go pick daisies. I don't know, but trying to join the community you actively screwed over, there's something odd about that to me. It doesn't make sense. And the fact that he can't understand why people would be upset at him for it well, is even odder. And the fact that, that he's on a show that spreads 
misinformation and fake information that I've proven, I, I just, I'm blown away. It, it like, it all blows me away. So I, I just, it worries me that you're connected to him a lot of ways and you're still defending him. I'm not uh, defending him at extent. all. The well, first time I talked to Rick speak Doty, to him because he's one of two people that has a special <laughs> access. Give me another person that's got the DD214 that puts him at us too. He'll be my buddy. But that shouldn't matter because of the other things he done far I, outweighs well, this main point you're trying to make. In I'm my just opinion. telling you this. When I first, and, and I think your listeners should listen to this and understand where I am coming, the path I am sure, coming from. Of course. The first absolutely. time I talked to this counterintelligence spook, okay, that, you know, lied to the UFO world. The first time I talked to him, okay, he said, I don't know about 10 times and said, I know twice. And I went, hmm, liars, or maybe someone that's coming clean or wants to get on another plateau in their life. Don't tell you, I don't know 10 times. Well, that's and I true. don't know much about the video instead of saying, oh, John, that's not here. true, man. Let me we tell don't... you about. Okay, I disagree with you. I have a degree ways. in counseling psychology. I've been a businessman for thirty-five years. I've been around thieves, liars, murderers, gangbangers, pro wrestlers, and politicians. I am a human bullshit meter. And if you want to debate that, I'm not going to debate that. I'm not saying Rick Doty sits on this pinnacle There's of truth and debate. honesty in the American way. But this guy has at least given me vernacular coding. And, 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 and help me digest things that other military people have told me. So you're a wow. human bullshit meter who thinks the Lockheed Martin whistleblower story, right? You just I throw think that, that out story there. has got and, a lot of validity. I think and that the story, alien interview video. I'm just saying it, it, it well, you'll, you'll cast a lot the, of doubt you on the, you being this human excuse bullshit me, meter. I am looking, excuse me, I am looking for the truth on the alien interview video. In 30 oh, we years. All are. Thank you. In 30 years, not one person has come forward to say it's a hoax. And this is why not one. Per Don't you tell me about Berkeley. This guy vetted it. This uh, special effects people, the special effects people look at it. It's fake. Or, okay. Tell me why it's fake. Help me. Because if it was fake, I could sell this. I could have sold this documentary. But the burden of proof isn't on proving it's fake. The burden of proof is on you proving it's true. No, it's not. Excuse me, sir. The burden of proof on me is proving what is the truth. Is it fake? Why is it fake? Is it okay, real? Fair. That's why is fair. It, why that, is it that's real? a fair point. And that, it's that all is a fair said. point. I just want to know the freaking truth. And I want to find out how Victor is. And you folks will never see me again. Sure. So. Look, I don't really want to get into that alien interview video, man. If I'm being honest, I don't think there's anything to that. But I will say one thing about it. Well, I hope you watch the documentary the, when, it, when it eventually comes out, even though it's taken three years. I will. I honestly, <laughs> I will, man. I, I absolutely will. I, I think we presented things, a, the, whether, the most the most fair. I sure. mean, I will I, watch I, it, man. I'm an I'm an open. You. I keep an open mind at the end of the day, but I'm also have a bullshit meter, and my bullshit meter every. Part of it rings off when I've seen that video multiple times. I've studied it. Have you zoomed it. the I've... face up where the mouth is going Absolutely. Look, man, you I mean, I'm just it. being Nobody, honest. I'm just I, 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 to me, it's weird. it looks fake. To you, it doesn't. I get that. To you, it to doesn't. To me, it so does look fake. You've got a head in a black room. When you look at it and you walk by it and look at it. A head look, the only it, question I have room, is about the widow. Fake. So, so uh, yeah, you know, oh, because yes, I had that funny moment in my video about your comment. Patrick, I spit on Coca-Cola in my podcast room when you talk about fingering. It was funny. It was funny, man. I, so I'm glad you laughed about it too. I didn't mean I any did. um, I disrespect did. by it. I, didn't I said that it. in the video. I didn't take it, it just, as that. It just look. It was 45 minutes into a video, and I was just tired, <laughs> and it, it just it hit me. But I do want to bring up a point about that. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe there's more to it. So you're here to explain. Sure. You, sure. You mentioned sure. that you had spoke to the widow on the phone and you explained yes. to her, Oh, this could be your husband, blah, blah, blah. And in one phone call, that widow changed her mind and said, that's my husband. Boy, you are spinning. I get the list. I'm asking. Of names. I asked a question. Okay. I'm not spinning anything. But you're kind of literally, you're, that's literally give me, the opposite give me a little, of spinning. A little bit more leeway of just you, you're, 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 uh, you're simplifying it too soon, too much. Well, okay. That's why you're here to I got clarify. The, what okay. am I going to give a 10 minute question? Yes. <laughs> I got the list of names from a DIA internal investigation, a list of names of the men that were behind the viewing partition 
watching the video, watching the alien interview, the two telepaths and the two doctors, allegedly the two doctors in the room. One of the doctors I screwed up, a UFO UFO researcher telling you he's wrong. I screwed up. I thought it was a doctor in Connecticut. It's this Craig Ferguson scientist that Linda Moulton Howe interviewed in 95. I totally screwed the pooch. So I have still have the other doctor's name and he has a nickname. I find out that he died in California in 2014. He's got nothing on the internet about him. Weird, a doctor not having anything, even that getting the hole in one at the country club in 1970, you know, nothing about him. I have a program. I find his widow, his second wife, who was his widow, very nice lady, like 80 years old. Can you imagine calling an 80 year old woman? I think your husband's involved in, I mean, it was Patrick. It was very uncomfortable. I said, my name is John Stewart. I'm a documentarian. I'm from Chicago. I am investigating something in Your husband's name came across my desk as possibly being part of this program, which had contact, you know, you're trying to like soft sell this, which had contact with your husband having contact with extraterrestrial beings. And I'm sorry, I give her fake name, Kim. Kim, I'm sorry. I don't want you to think I'm crazy. She's quiet. She's like, okay. I said, may I show, send you the video on YouTube? All you got to do is click on it. And, and I feel that your husband is one of the two doctors. I call her back in five, six, seven minutes. She answers the phone. Hi, hi John. Hi, hi Kim. What do, you, what do you think? Is there any way your husband is the doctor on the right, the doctor on the left? She's like, my husband is the doctor on the alien's right, our left. <laughs> she was going to hang up on me, call me crazy. She said, that's his bridge of his nose and that's his eyes. John, do you ever watch the honeymooners? I'm like, I'm a honeymooner. Yes. I, when I was a kid, she's like, there's a, there's a, we always laugh about this. There's a, she said this, we always laugh about this. There is a uh, episode called funny money. Ralph Cramden finds fake money on a bus. The police officer coming to the Cramden house apartment, looking for a donation. My husband looks just like him. So I go find it. I look in the thing. I'm like that the long bridge of the nose. She said, that's my husband on the aliens, right? My left. Patrick, listen to me. She's like, you are solving a family. You are solving a family uh, secret, a family mystery. Like, what is that? She's like, John, he tells us, he, she uses his nickname. We have a lot of friends in our friend group that were in Korea, World War II, Vietnam. Whenever we're together, lo and behold, Somebody talks, mentions a funny story about a funny drill instructor, the terrible conditions at a at boot camp or the food at some sort of base that they were stationed at. She's like, John, for the uh, the 20 plus years that I was married to, um, he never joined in on the laughter, maybe just a little, little chuckle. He never once told a story of his own about maybe his experience. And she says, in the Army Medical Corps, Patrick, I never said Army Medical Corps. That was on my list. So and doctor, so and so, U.S. Army Medical Corps. I didn't even know what that is. I said, yeah. I said, Kim, what is the Army Medical Corps? She said that's the the unit or whatever that doctors go into the army to learn to be doctors and actually be an army and a doctor in the army. She's like, John, you are solving mystery. She used the thing, the light bulb when you were talking to me was going off over the top of my head. This is why my husband was so secretive and never, ever talked about his time in the Army Medical Corps. You are solving our family secret. And remember what Victor said, the medical staff at S4 are chosen more for their ability to keep Mm -hmm. secrets than their medical knowledge. Victor, the whistleblower, totally trashed the medical staff there. So here is two stories. And and she's like, wait a minute. So so it was one conversation she had with you. That's it, sir. So, so my, goes, so my question wasn't else, that simple. Uh, just to just I'm to sorry. be fair to me, okay. my okay. my question wasn't that right. You, so I was right. She did after one conversation say, "Yep, yeah, this is my husband." Oh. And just from a sh- from a sh- a, Those a two dark, conversations, one phone a dark call, shadow. Uh, that's my husband. She immediately knew an eighty year old yeah. woman who probably her facilities are not at top notch. Right. And she says, you've solved the family mystery, a stranger she's never met before. 
comes into her life and she just accepts all of this right away. Yep, that's my husband. He's in this alien video. Uh, that's him. That, don't you think, don't you find that odd? No, Does I find not, it odd you, that- You said you have a find huge it BS meter. Doesn't your BS meter go off? That an idiot woman is, is lying to me? My, yeah. That, wait a minute, a guy is secretive. Like crazy. Doesn't, a guy that doesn't, a man that does not talk to his uh, wife. My father was secretive. any time in the army. What are we talking about? He was in the Air Force. Does he? Did he work on Dude, aliens? I, I this no. is one thing that I am not going to debate you. This is what happened to me. My bullshit meter, I think, is totally disarmed. I just helped this lady reveal why her husband was so That's freaking secretive. I, I, and he wasn't I look, secretive. No offense, she said man. about his life, about Don't, his time. In you the US told that you Corps. didn't help this woman solve her family history, man. That's what she told you. Family I think secret. You did. Family well, her, secret. She so said her bone of contention. Like you helped this no. this family. Okay. Uh, you know, like okay. you've done something miraculous. No offense, man. No, that sounds no, no. She she actually said odd. it was you solved the bone of contention with my. I husband get what I. she said. I okay. get what she said. But my point is, don't you find it odd that she immediately said this is it? No, she didn't even vet it. She didn't even think about it. She didn't consult other family members. She didn't take the time to think for weeks and maybe look into some details and talk to some. She just immediately said, you can't tell who anybody is in those videos, man. So this 80 year old woman on a grainy old video from the mid nineties, saw her husband. Who is the wife of the man in the video that was sent to like, me I'm sorry, by a DIA dude. person. I'm sorry, John. That just sounds wow. like total horse BS to me, man. I'm sorry. What I'm is just horse saying. BS? Because you're really starting to piss me that? off now. What is horse? You are you saying that I'm lying? That I didn't make uh, a phone call? That I didn't find this doctor's I, widow? That she I didn't give me the number That's of not what I said. Who lives That's in, not what okay. I said. Okay, but good. Your, good. But your reaction to that is interesting. Well, yeah, because when you're called a fucking liar, yeah. That, I didn't bothered. say that, but you assume I did, which is interesting. I didn't say that. You said no, my human, my BS meter is going off the charts. That I yeah. should that I should have thought she was bullshitting of what she, me. Yes, yes. An 80 year old woman in Northern yes. California yes. whose husband was on a list of okay. Correct. Hey, you, one you're conversation. Better, you're a better detective than me, buddy. Okay. I, I'm not a okay. detective. See, I don't claim to have stories or or give secret information or have uh, you know anonymous sources. I don't do that on vetted. That's not what I do. I'm not here to trick people. I'm not here to lie to people on my channel. I respect the so audience. So you have anonymous sources, people. that's bad? In my opinion, yes. So Leslie Keen is bad. She's got anonymous sources. Whitney Webb. I didn't the, say the she's bad. Of... I said having anonymous sources is bad. That's well, what I said. Patrick, sometimes that's the only way you can get a story out. And you can I, I, and you tell your editor, you tell the editor, you show your editor I don't care. who your source is. I okay, don't care. Well. I'm just saying it's my opinion. That's how I feel. I, and it definitely- We never would have got to Watergate if we didn't have LARPers, it. That's how LARPers use it. That's how people who spread fake stories, they count on that. They count on being able that, to be anonymous sources. And guys like you, we don't know if we can I believe- I said she the emails you said, though too. So I mean, said, I, I, I understand have, what oh, you're dude, saying. Those emails could have been fake, bro. Let's be but, real. But if I, I don't was even know, did this, you write the email? If, How do I know I was, you didn't write it? Well, didn't you see his email? Did his not his email address that, in there? You telling okay. me that can't be faked? Oh yeah, of course, of course. You can't send an email to yourself? I mean, get, of course get out of here, can. dude. Of Come course. on, let's yeah. be real, John. Yeah. All right. yeah. We, we, did you write it? No, I did not write that. It Did someone you know write it? No. And this guy actually said, I think it's, if you, you see in the email, I could be wrong. In, in the email, he said, I will be willing to talk to you on the phone or meet you. I think I even wrote, I'll go to Seattle and meet you. He I think that's, you. maybe that could be. And Wasn't just, that a sign that something was wrong? He ghosted you? Well, I've you? had people tell me contacting that. contacting you? No, I've had experts and whistleblowers tell me that this is a common thing, that the whistleblower, they it's called purging. They purge their secret. Maybe they have regrets and, and do a, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't have but done he that. Said, he said he didn't know if it was true, man. So he's he's not blowing the whistle on anything. He doesn't well, okay. even know if it's true. He okay. says that in the email. And if my and if my emails weren't stolen, maybe I wouldn't have been as paranoid. I'm He's sorry. I'm not even I am. sure it's true. And you go and tell the story, even. Right. Does that make sense? You don't. He doesn't. Yes, it even does know make it's sense. True. He and told me this long tail. Well, I think that I think that totally 
validates that he's not some guy trying to ram a story in. That's I like exactly people like that. exactly what it sounds like. Look, it sounds like oh, a guy I, I, who made well, it I up, disagree with or you. it sounds like you or someone you know wrote it. That's okay. my gut feeling. Well, he wanted he was he's also planning on wanted to contact the uh thank you Mike contact the uh the like why would he go families. to you? No offense to you, but why did, would he go to you? Well, did you not see that in the in, in did yes. you not hear my and that's it my said, and that's my you point. Why you? Well, I because get I must that, come dude, across, but who I'm, are you? You're just a regular guy. Why would he go to you? Okay. Why wouldn't he go to somebody who could get the real story out? Why it's like going to me? Well, I think I come across first of all. I take a little offense at that. I think I come across as someone that is open and receptive to listening. And that I doesn't ask for matter though. You just listen. said you're a regular okay, everyday I'm, guy. Right. I'm not a governor or president of the United States. Correct. So, so I why determine go to my you guy with because the I'm on podcast. Story in human history. I'm, I'm, I'm on podcast talking about an alleged. Uh, so are a lot of people. Why not go to Jeremy Corbell, George Knapp? Can Leslie you let me Kane, finish? Ralph Can you let me finish? He did. He first of all, he went to another journalist with this story too. Number another two, another journalist. Are you? Yes, a journalist? he did. Okay, he went to myself and a journalist. I okay. have written stories that have been published on the internet, but yes, yeah, so he went to myself, little old John Stewart, and a legitimate, verified journalist with the same. Who was story. that journalist? I, I will not say. So he literally asked me not to say say that. I will ask him if he wants to be while well, he does not want to be. So there's other the correspondence story. you did not share with me between you and him. No, I think you have that. So you sent me everything of a correspondence. I believe so. You. Yeah. Can I say something? If you look into the emails, I, I feel one of the reasons why he called me is because when my, when my. Um, he emailed you or he called you. I'm sorry. I dude, I use generalization. When he contacted me via email, is that better? When he contacted me via email. Details um, matter, I'm sorry. To I like, know, You're I talking know, about Patrick, the greatest, I, know, I mean, you're I talking know, about investigations, BS meter, Buddy, I'm legit, I'm credible, and then you're getting caught up that I'm worried about I never details. I said I'm legit and credible or, anyways. So he, when he contacted me via email, the last email he sent me, if you read it, he wanted to know about the telepath portion of my investigation. He is claiming. I'm so glad that, you brought that up. Yeah. Well, did you see that in the email? So he asked me about it. I told him about the telepaths that was that were simply in this investigation uh, memo from the DIA, and that seemed to be of a concern to him because he said in the email that's how he thinks and feels that Lockheed broke through the firewall of advancement in creating an. But alien again, he doesn't know if vehicle. any of this is true. Okay. I, I'm I totally understand what you're saying. And if my emails that, weren't swiped, I'm days just saying, later, is that not a huge red flag to you? The no, guy I think that's a person saying you, that's a person saying I wasn't at the true. firefight. I didn't help the aircraft launch off into the space. I wasn't on air traffic control. I wasn't part of JSOC. I didn't see this, but this is the entire information. So it's a story of a logic. story of a story of well, a so story. Well, so is David Grush. You know, we trade on that in that's in, not in, true. In, in the UFO David Grush world, claims to have firsthand witness. He claims to have been read into a UFO program. He gave a presentation in New York where he but it's said not that David he was Grush, ready. And I, I think David Grush is telling him 100,000 percent true. I think David is totally truthful. And, and look, David I has believe, never seen an alien. I, you know, I, I, you so. know, well, I don't know. He that's not you, you can't claim that. He has not stated one way or the other. I'm not saying he has. I'm just saying he has not right. stated one way or the other, man. Right. So we don't know that. We don't know the extent of his full knowledge. But look, man, I do believe in this topic, in this. I've never yeah. had my own experience, but I believe in this. But I actually believe in it so much that I am not afraid to be like, that's nonsense. That's nonsense. Because if we just take it all for granted and if we just let people come out and tell these crazy stories without vetting them or making sure they're true, even when the person telling you the story doesn't even know if it's true. I just I worry about that because it, it muddies the waters because you know what happens in the comments and other comments it spreads and it just becomes fact that that story is fact the, the story you told about Lockheed people think it's fact. Well, the only thing I could say to that is I did that selfishly for my yeah. paranoid protection. And I know, man. Said and again, you sent the email to this me. This sounds crazy. You put this my family crazy. in jeopardy as well. This is crazy. You didn't even think yeah. about it. I'm just saying, man, you, you you didn't think about a lot of things. You put my family and me in jeopardy. How do you think I feel, man? 
if it's true in there that he's revealing classified information, you put my whole family and myself. A, in a, a topical story without names no. is not a classified. Inf is not. It's he's not stealing name. a classified document. And I've yeah. been trained by people to say, don't accept this. Don't accept if it's got co heading and coding from the intelligence. Who community. trained don't you? Don't accept that. Oh, I'm okay. I'm using another jump. Showed me, told me how to accept classified Who? documents. His name is Holden. He's from the National Air and Space Intelligence Center. So one when you asked me who ghosted you... me, yes, yeah. he said, John, before we continue, you know, Scott Walter from American on Earth, they, these two are in contact, said, you're a nice guy, and I don't want you to get in trouble. When people, when you're going to be investigating this and you're going to continue your investigation, let me give you a little hint. Don't accept anything that has military heading or make sure everything is retranscribed and make sure you ask somebody. Am I okay to receive this? Is this document you're going to send me going to get? Did you do that to I me? I think that was a great. Did you check okay. with me? Hey, man, can I send you this private stuff? You asked Are you cool me with to that? send it to you. I, Again, I mean, John, we went over this. You said, John, send me the email. Okay, it's, we're splitting hairs. I'm sorry. No, we're not. I'm splitting sorry you hairs, feel the man. way you are. Yes, we're not we are. splitting hair. No, we're not. I did not send you a document from uh, the, 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 the you the sent Pentagon. me an email. I you sent just, you an email. First of all, you sent me a screenshot without me asking, and you said, "Here, here's the top one." I didn't ask for it. You just sent it. You didn't say, "Please do not share." The email didn't say anything like that. Did you? Then I say, asked can for you the send rest. Me the emails. Correct. I, I said, "Can I, you I send me the rest?" Listen, no, dude, did you not initially ask this. me to send you the email? So you can say whatever you want. Yes. Did you not? Okay. Yes. You asked me did, to send you the email. Did I ask oh, you to send me yes. secret private stuff that I can't share? No. Because in the first email, well, you didn't that's, say, that's, do that's not share email. this. It's not splitting hairs, man. And anyone listening to this is going to agree with me. Sorry, okay. dude. I but I would be careful sending that to people. It puts their families and themselves in danger. You need to ask, can I send you private stuff that you can't share with anybody? If they consent, then you send it. If they don't, then you don't send it. Okay. That's my opinion. So again, yes, I feel that you put me, well, well, there's John, man, leaving the podcast. So y'all decide how y'all feel, what y'all think of that interview. Um, if y'all think I was being too hard, I don't, man. I think he put my family and my friends, my situation in danger by sending that to me. And now I have to share it. And uh, the fact that he can't see that we're splitting hairs. I think y'all saw enough of John in that interview to know that there's something not all potentially there with this guy. He clearly doesn't have a good process for vetting anything. He clearly doesn't have a good process for verifying information. He just, he's stated in our interview, he doesn't need to vet it, vet that Lockheed story. But then he goes through the process of how he vets it, which isn't very well at all, right? And he selfishly put it out because that's what this is really about. It's about him and protecting himself. And look, I don't know. I'm curious what y'all say about this. Sorry, I had to push back on him on a lot of things. I'm a little worried about that guy. I don't trust his relationship to Rick Doty. I don't trust what he's saying about the alien interview. I don't trust the comments he's making because, for instance, the Danny Sheehan comment on my video, he doesn't go and clarify, hey, I'm not talking about my video, but he wants it to be out there that that people think Danny Sheehan agrees with them. Again, he put that video on his YouTube channel of me talking about it. And I use that video as an example, not to say that's the alien video interview that Danny Sheehan thinks is the one that's going to come out, right? UFO lawyer Danny Sheehan claims that a video of an actual extraterrestrial being being interviewed is going to be released, okay? So an ET, an alien, right? Being interviewed on tape, it's coming out to the public, right? We'll be able to see this. And he says he knows the person who was there when it was filmed, right? So let's take a look at this clip of a new interview you did and get some details. So what do you say? There's going to be a video of an actual interview of an actual extraterrestrial being. There's you know a, this? Yes. You know, so, I mean, I know that that exists. Uh, and, uh, and that's part of the crown jewels that they're not going to want to reveal. 
But uh, is that that's on the table to come out? Well, uh, what I'm saying is that I talked to the person who was there uh, and that they've got this on film. Uh, and so that if you're really going to get down, when you say we get to the nut of the whole thing, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the kind of thing that once it's shown to the American public, there's, you know, Katie bar the door. Oh, he's back. I bet something happened. You're you're muted, John. Hear me now? There you go. Yeah. Okay. Sorry Everything about that. Everything okay? Yes. Yeah. Just we went out a bit. Lost battery. I'm just not going to be able to use my earplugs because I'm charging from a wall. Sure, man. Out sure, here no in, in the, at the house well, in Vegas. Sorry about well, that. Well, look, man. No, don't worry. Look, man, I think um, we've covered everything as it is. Um, so I appreciate your time and everything, uh, you know, clarifying some answers. Thank you. Um, Thanks for I am having gonna me release, on. I am going to release those emails, like I said. Okay. I guess we'll agree to disagree and we'll let people decide what they think about that situation. Yeah, I'm sorry you feel that that what uh, re honoring your request to do that wasn't done the way you wanted it to be done. And for that, I apologize. So sorry. It's not it's not the way I want it to be done. It's the way it should be done. So I hope in the future you get consent from people before you send them things like that. So all right, man. Well, have a good rest of the afternoon. I'll let you know when the interview uh goes out. It should be tomorrow. Okay. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you to all your listening right, reviewers. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Sounds good. Have a good day. Okay. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you all so much for watching the interview with John Stewart again. I just want to say thank you to him for coming on the show. Much respect for uh, facing the questions. So again, join me tomorrow as I am going to reveal all of the screenshots of this, um, you know, Lockheed Martin whistleblower, insider, leaker, whatever we want to call them. Um, I'm going to share all of those emails. We're going to go over them exactly what said. And again, the one particular screenshot and portion of his email that just blows this all up, in my opinion. So I'm curious to, you know, hear what y'all think. Again, it was already mentioned in the interview, so y'all are probably already leaving comments about it. And I'm also just going to discuss different parts of the interview and definitely some comments that y'all leave. So leave a good comment. I'll bring it up in tomorrow's video. So again, thank y'all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you guys tomorrow, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you watched this far already and you're not subscribed, my goodness, please hit the subscribe button. So again, thank y'all so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, vetters, every day's a gift. Peace.